What are Burnley thinking? Just unbelievable news coming out of Burnley today. Sean Dyche has been sacked as Burnley manager after 10 years at the club. Just, I'm completely stunned by the news. I'm sure like everyone else is. I cannot believe he's been sacked now in the middle of the season when Burnley still have eight games left to play and they're only four points away from safety. Yes, relegations probably would have happened anyway, but just completely crazy news. Before I analyse Burnley's current situation now, today, let's talk about Sean Dyche's time as manager because I think it's fair to say that he's completely transformed the town, let alone the football club. He's been phenomenal for Burnley. He was initially appointed in October 2012, so he's been at the club for over almost 10 years. That's absolutely ridiculous in this day and age. Phenomenal from him and Burnley. So he was appointed October 2012 and the first significant achievement he made is that in September, by September 2013, uh, he had made the best ever start to a season for Burnley. Phenomenal. And then in the same season, he goes on to win promotion to the Premier League. Then they were relegated in the following season, but they came back straight away, first time of asking, and they won promotion in the 15-16 season. And he's kept Burnley in the Premier League for six consecutive seasons. That is absolutely phenomenal, given the amount they've spent over the course of that time. And even now, for him to achieve such sustainability at Burnley is phenomenal. And I'm just completely st I'm stunned. I'm still just stunned that he's been sacked. I mean, and it's not like he was even sacked straight away after the Norwich game. Anyway, anyway, he achieved promotion second time of asking in the 15-16 season. Sixth, this is the sixth consecutive season Burnley are in the Premier League. And let's analyse their time in the Premier League over those six seasons. So... In the 16-17 season, Burnley reached 40 points and they finished 16th. So, massive achievement, complete success. Then in the following season, they finished 7th and, qu and qualify for the second qualifying round of the Europa League. That's unbelievable. And yeah, OK, they only played Aberdeen and then they got um, knocked out against Olympiacos. But Burnley fans can still say they achieved European football. They saw European football at Turf Moor and they finished seventh in the Premier League in the 17-18 season. That's amazing achievement from Burnley. Fantastic from them. And they were always going to tail off next season. They were always going to struggle with playing in Europe and and after exerting so much energy and effort in the in the previous season, obviously Burnley didn't spend a lot because Burnley just do not spend a lot of money. And they were always going to struggle the following season, but they still finished on 40 points and finished 15th. I mean, how many teams get relegated after playing in Europe the previous season or just completely collapse in the, in the next couple of seasons after that? And Burnley, they barely spent any money and they had four and they finished on 40 points, 15th. Like I said, really good achievement from Burnley. Then, in the 1920 season, they finished on 54 points again, and they only finished 10th, but they finished on the same amount of points as they did in the 1718 season, where they finished 7th and played in Europe. So for that, that is phenomenal for them to finish 10th in the 1920 season. Brilliant effort from them. And then in the 2020-2021 season, the kind of lockdown season, really, they only finished 17th on 39 points but they were nine points away from Fulham and for most of the season they didn't really look like getting relegated so I mean they've had a phenomenal journey in the Premier League and okay this season they're now in the relegation zone looking like they're going to get relegated but it wasn't done it wasn't confirmed Everton was still struggling massively and they just beaten Everton and okay they got a really bad loss against Norwich but I just didn't think Burnley were that sort of club. It's just crazy. Um, let's analyse how this season's gone. So they lost against Brighton early on in the season, which is a, which was a really big loss. Argu and for, I think that was the first game of the season where arguably they could have got a draw, but they lost in the 90th minute. So that's almost set the tone really for this season. They drew against Leeds at home. Again, 
that's the game they were looking probably to win that game. They drew away to Leicester. That was a really good performance and they were unlucky to win that game. And they drew away against Saints as well. Maxwell Cornet arriving himself on the Premier League scene. He performed really well that day. And arguably Burnley could have nicked it, could have won the game, but they only got a draw. And they drew nil-nil at home against Norwich in what was a really poor performance, to be fair. Their first win of the season was on the 30th of October against Brentford where they won 3-1 very convincing very good performance and February February was a massive massive month for Burnley so of course in January they signed Weghorst they needed a striker they needed someone to come in they signed Weghorst big signing obviously they needed a replacement for Woods and February was well as we look back on the season for Burnley this will probably be their strongest seat strongest month because they drew with Man United on the 8th of February, then they beat Brighton convincingly 3-0, phenomenal performance. And I think everyone at that point thought, right, OK, Burnley, here they go, on their charge, they're going to stay up. Because not only did they beat Brighton 3-0, but it was so convincing, very, very good performance for them. Then they beat Spurs in the next game at home, 1-0, classic traditional Burnley of old, gritty, grinded out the result not a pretty game but they got the win and then they drew away against Palace on the 26th of February and at that point they were only one point away from safety so after the Palace game a lot of people and the Burnley hierarchy and and Burnley um, board and the fans and even Sean Dyche would have probably thought okay right this is our chance now we've had a phenomenal month of February let's kick on and they just didn't. They just didn't kick on some really um, bad performances and big losses. But then they go and beat Everton 3-2. Fantastic game. And you're thinking, right, Burnley can really stay up here. And yes, the Norwich game was a poor performance, especially in the second half. They didn't deserve to win that game. But I just done that Burnley have I've done it. And OK, this season they have new owners. They have American owners and... They'll, they're a bit more ambitious, but because of the new owners, they've actually put Burnley in £60 million of debt. So arguably, they really needed to stay up this season more than ever with the new ownership. But it shows that these new owners are, are far more ruthless because I, I just cannot believe that under the previous owners, Burnley would have sacked Sean Dyche. Especially in this manner. I just can't stop thinking about it. It wasn't like... They sacked him the day after the Norwich game as well. It's Friday the 15th of April. So we've had a full week of, well, Burnley have had a full week of preparing for their next game, West Ham away on Sunday. Oh, on yeah, on Sunday. And and they've sacked him in this way. I, I just think it's so disrespectful. There's just clearly very, very little loyalty in the game anymore, which is so disappointing and, and sad. And I... I, I, Burnley fans must be gutted. I mean, surely the majority of Burnley fans would have wanted Sean Dyche to stay in charge. It's just ridiculous. And where do Burnley go from here? Well, they've played the same amount of games as Everton and they're only four points away on the same goal difference. And they have two games in hand over Leeds, one game in hand over Newcastle, Watford and Norwich. And the games they've got left, you, you could easily, they could win them. You know, they could have picked up a few results. West Ham away, okay, not an easy game. I mean, I did a preview and obviously I didn't talk about Sean Dyche being sacked because at the time he wasn't, but you'd think that he West Ham, they would have probably won that game. Or not, no, sorry, West Ham probably would have won that game, but still West Ham were tired after the Leon performance and you just never knew Burnley might have nicked a result there. Saints at home, you're thinking they could easily win that game. And then what they got to play, what they had to play Watford away, and then Villa, who had nothing, very little to play for, and then Newcastle at home on the final day of the season. Burnley still could have picked up a few results and stayed up. But even if Burnley got relegated, I think they should have given Sean Dice the chance to get Burnley back up again. I mean, who are Burnley going to bring in that is going to do a better job than Sean Dice with the squad that they have? I, I just have no idea. I'm, I'm completely stunned by, by the sacking. I think Burnley have made a terrible mistake. I think Burnley will almost certainly get relegated now. And I think it's going to be a really difficult rebuilding job from here. I mean, it depends what the owners want. I, I, obviously, obviously, they want Burnley to stay up. But in terms of the new manager, 
do they want someone that's going to be a similar style to Sean Dyche because of the squad Burnley have, which is limited to say the least, especially in terms of players that can play out from the back and play progressive passes? Or do they want a manager that's going to play a completely different style of football and have a completely different, completely rehaul of the whole entire squad? Um, I'm not sure, but I think it's a, a naive decision from the Burnley hierarchy. And ultimately, I think it's the wrong one. Because, like I said, even if Burnley got relegated, Sean Dyche should have been the man to give Burnley the chance to get back to the Premier League, given that he's had two promotions with Burnley. This is the sixth consecutive season in the Premier League and they've played in Europe, finished seventh and finished tenth. It's just crazy. And this is the only season where they've really looked like in massive, massive danger because even in the previous season, like I said, even though they finished only on 39 points and they finished 17th, they didn't look like they were going to get relegated because they were nine points away from Fulham. So I'm just stunned by the news. Um, let me know what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you later.